Hey guys, uh, I'm here with my friend Ayman from Ryerson University, uh, now known as Toronto Metropolitan University. And today we're gonna compare U of T and Ryerson to see which school is actually better. Mine. Uh, 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 <laughs> we're gonna see, we're gonna see today. Also, Ayman will have a chance to ask me a question about U of T at the end. So make sure to watch the video till the end because I don't know what Ayman's gonna ask me at the end. I'm actually scared. Now. I have a good one for you. I have oh a good my, one for you. Oh my. All right. Well, without further ado, Let's see which school is better, U of T or Ryerson. Let's start with our name, year, and our program. So my name is Ayman. I'm in the business management program at Ryerson University under the Ted Rogers School of Management. As Richard has mentioned, it's now called Toronto Metropolitan University. I'm not gonna get into my feelings about that <laughs> name. I think it's a little bit iffy, but we move on. Uh, moving into our second question, where is Ryerson University? So it's right in downtown core. I guess the most significant thing around Ryerson is Young and Nanda Square and the Eden Center. Our campus is a bit different from UFT's campus where it's integrated into the downtown. It's not mm -hmm. one campus village kind of area. It's buildings scattered all over the place. So it's pretty cool in that way, but it also involves a lot of walking because of that. So ups and downs of it. Then because your campus is so near, I mean, it's within the Eden Center. Do you shop a lot in the Eden Center? Okay, so this is what happens with Ryerson students and this is a shared experience. I've okay, talked okay, to a lot okay. of Ryerson students about this. First year, you're awed by being right beside the Eden Center. So people start going there like, you know, every week. But as you stay at Ryerson past first year, you stop going there really. Oh, okay, because okay. Then could you describe a typical Ryerson student? I think one thing I can say about Ryerson students is they tend to be very fashion forward. They like to be mm. trendy. They like to look good and show off. Well, I don't know if I'm speaking right for typical U of T students, but I think uh, that fashion thingy is a little bit different here at U of T. I feel like a typical U of T student is uh, sleep deprived, has like a Starbucks can or whatever like Red Bull is, wearing a U of T hoodie, it's gotta be like black or any dark color like U of T sweatshirt, probably a sweatpants too, probably U of T one as well, uh, MacBook, iPad, like eye pencil, whatever it is. So yeah, it's just, um, I guess a little bit sad, but yeah, that's, that's reality. So what is Ryerson best known for? First of all, I think we are considered generally a forward looking university uh, our programs tend to be kind of progressive we got a law school recently even mm. the law law school it has focuses on tech they make you learn Python in your first year wow. of law school so it's a very forward-looking university which is cool for U of T I think we're best known for just the reputation of U of T the academics obviously we're also in the heart of downtown Toronto so a lot of networking opportunities all that so yeah I think we're quite similar in that way but yeah moving on to our next question this Describe Ryerson in one word. I would say chaotic. Chaotic. But but not chaotic in a bad <laughs> way, but chaotic in like our organized chaos. Okay. For me with U of T, I think I'll use the word maybe like a cocoon, like a cocoon stage. Like you spend like four years like suffering U of tears, but then after you, you know, graduate and everything, you'll have like a very bright future. So the seventh question is, tell me about a stereotype about uh, Ryerson students that is actually true. I would say there's a lot of social justice warriors at Ryerson, okay. for better or for worse. Okay. Some of them are in your face, some of them are making a positive change. Okay. I'm included in that. So I feel into that stereotype too that's the type of university we are so you get the ups and downs with that yeah okay that is very interesting because i think there's a stereotype that uft students study a lot and i think that is true because every time i go to like any library it's completely packed no matter what time it is of the year of the time it's completely packed everyone has a red bull or a coffee on their side they're just grinding it out so i say yeah that that grind i guess that kind of ties into the competitiveness as well too but you know uft is no for their academics and I think that is true. Yeah, you guys aren't allowed to have a social life. That, <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, reserved for us. That's yeah, reserved for that's us. reserved for other universities like Western University, Ryerson University, other UBC, other universities can have social life. For us, we're just on the grind. And now a word from our sponsors. It's a new school year, so I know that many of you guys just moved into your new place and Real Link, which is the sponsor of today's video, can help you upgrade your security for your new place. Trusted by over 2 million users, Real Link delivers 
delivers reliable and budget-friendly security products for students like us. For example, take a look at this camera that I got from Reallink for under $200 that has amazing features like night vision, person and vehicle detection, and solar power panels. With cameras like this, you can take a look at what's going on both inside and outside of your home even when you're out for your class using the Reallink app on your phone. So if you're interested, make sure to visit their website using the links in my description and use my code to get 5% off your next purchase. Thank you again to Reallink for sponsoring this video and let's get right back to the video now. How is the party scene at Ryerson? I think you find something similar to UFT where the party scene isn't all that amazing. But the thing about downtown is you can go to the party. You know? Exactly. There's clubs yeah. everywhere. There's always a party going on somewhere. Like UFT, Ryerson, I know they both don't have that many frats. From my knowledge, you could correct mm -hmm. me after if I'm wrong, but there's not that many frats. There's a few and there are parties, but it's nothing crazy because so many people commute. They're not staying downtown. And if they are, they are more likely to go to a club like Rebel or whatever. Right. So for me, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't really go to parties. I'm I'm a very much of a nerd. Me, so, neither. me neither. Yeah. We're so, in the same boat. So um, <laughs> I can't really speak on like the party scenes here at UFT. Um, you know, we're not really known for parties again. Like you don't come to UFT to really party. You go to like other universities such as like I don't know, Western University. <laughs> Come on guys, like U of T, you're not coming here to party. So party scene, I'll be honest, not the greatest. Next question, how many hours do you sleep every day? Usually I think we're asking because a lot of people are commuting. If they have like a class that lasts until like 6 p.m. Mm. or something, they're getting home by 7, 8, yeah, 7, 8, 8, 8 p.m. Yeah. So I can get eight hours if I need to get mm. eight hours. It's just waking up in the morning when you have that 8 a.m. class. True. You have to wake up at like 5.30 to get there. Oh you know? my, oh my. Then uh, tying into this question, how many hours do you study every day? On average, if I have five classes, I will spend about two hours per class. Obviously, when mm. there's more exams happening, I spend more hours. But mm. on average, it's like two hours per class. So 10 hours a week of studying. Uh, for me, I think I can give like a daily estimation. I would say like not including class time. I think I study around like five, six hours. Uh, like on average, obviously that goes up during like, you know, exam season. But I would say just on a normal day, like five, six hours. What else school? I think that's the best estimate I can give. All right, moving on to our next question. Uh, how's the social life at Ryerson? Like, is it hard to make friends? I think it's good. I think because there's so many type of people, there's like a student association for like every culture, every mm -hmm. interest, but you do have to go out and do it. It's not mm -hmm. like a campus like Western or Queens where there's so many people that just live on campus. I'm going back to the commuting thing right, right. because people tend to want to leave campus like after they're done because they have to commute all the way back Home. people don't like staying behind on campus unless it's like exam season and they right, have, to, right, right. have to study so right. if you you have to kind of find those people. So the best way to do that is joining student groups. That's how I did it throughout my time at Ryerson. That's how I made my friends at Ryerson. So yeah, you can make friends, uh, but you have to make that initiative to do it. It's not as easy as some other type of campuses. All right, moving on. Rate the quality of food on campus out of 10. I mean, we both live downtown, true, right? True. So uh, depending on how much you want to spend, food can be really good. There's a lot of like, you know, the generic uh, fast food brands, but there's also a lot of uh, more like local, local spots so it's nice because you're downtown like I said the campus is very scattered so depending on which university building you're near there's a lot of options so I think I would rate it like a nine I think it's a oh, good wow. place that's that's pretty high I think I'll also actually rate pretty high for U of T just because like yeah we're very close to like downtown so you can get like other outside campus food but if we're talking about like campus food I think New College has very good food Cindy Smith has really good food and also the Roberts library has really good food they have the cafeteria there so I'll rate it out of like 8 out of 10 rate the quality of the dorms out of 10 so I think there's a mix there's the newer uh, apartment style dorms that are pretty nice and and then there's like the older ones that are really run down. I, I would say on average, the dorms are like a six. It's That's small. Realistic. They're, it's realistic, it's, it's run yeah. down. Dorms don't tend to be as nice as getting your own apartment no, at no, the end of the day. It's just yeah. how it is. All right. So I know that business schools pay a little bit more tuition, but what would you say the average tuition is at Ryerson? So in the business management program, so the program I'm in, the standard tuition is about 10500 per year. In terms of Ryerson as a whole, the tuition is about 8 k 
day. For U of T, it really depends first if you are domestic or international. If you're international, you're paying like <laughs> triple or quadruple the price of like whatever domestics are paying. So I'm not gonna touch up on the international just because like I've seen like literally six figures sitting in their balance. So I'm not gonna go there. We're not in the same league. Yeah, we're not in the same league. So <laughs> I'm gonna talk about domestics. So uh, usually domestics around seven to eight K. Uh, but if we're talking about specific programs such as like Rotman Commerce, you pay eight K in your first year but starting from your second year you pay around 16 to 17 uh, which is yeah again double of what domestic students pay but uh, it's still much better than what um, internationals pay so that's the average tuition at U of T then on scale of 1 to 10 how competitive is Ryerson it depends on your program uh, if you're in like engineering it's more competitive right. if you're in pre-med programs mm -hmm. it can be really competitive but compared to a lot of I guess top tier universities like the UFTs, UBCs, McGills of the world, Ryerson is in a very competitive environment. I think UFT, um, with all its reputations and you know competitiveness, I really gotta put it at max scale for this. 10 out of 10 for the yeah. competitiveness. Then, what's the best and the worst thing about being at Ryerson? The best thing is the people you meet. Like I said, very diverse campus. In terms of the worst thing, I would say Commuting, I just don't like commuting, man. It's uh, like one and a half <laughs> hours. Every Oh, that is a long commute. Then could you tell us a little bit about applying to Ryerson and how the application looks like uh, for future students who might want to apply to Ryerson? So Ryerson depends on the program, but in general, most Ryerson programs don't need you to do a supplementary application. Mm -hmm. I know some business schools like Rotman, they do mm -hmm. the interviews, they do I think a paper as well right. that you submit. Ryerson doesn't have that for their business program. You just apply, it's really dependent on your grades and if you have the required courses uh, and most of our essence programs are like that but we do have some like very competitive creative programs like the fashion program and the film program mm. those you do have to submit a portfolio and a personal statement uh, but it's not to the degree of those higher end universities where your grades have to be in the 90s to get in mm. most of our programs your grades are in the 80s you're gonna get in for U of T I already made two videos on it so go check that out I'll link in the description but yeah then tying into our next question was it hard Hard to get into Ryerson. I applied to Ryerson with an 85 average. I believe that was my average going from high school. Yeah, I think it's not super hard to get in. I think I'll say this about U of T. It's a lot harder to stay within U of T than to get into U of T. Yeah, I've seen a lot of my you know personal friends and just like I heard stories, but yeah, it's harder to stay within U of T than to get into U of T. Yeah, that's what I hear as well. All right, our last question now. Okay. Before before you ask me a question about UFT, let's hear it. Is uh, if you can go back in time, would you still choose Ryerson and would you still apply to Ryerson and like would you still apply to other schools? How would you go about it? I don't think I regret my decision and I don't think I would, I would change it. I made some good friends and I like the environment of Ryerson. I like being downtown. I feel mm. like it's UFT but less stress. <laughs> uh, I like it and I don't think I would change my decision. For me, yeah, I, I don't think I would change a thing. I only apply to UBC and U of T as you guys know but that saved me a lot of stress because I only had two options to choose from both are great universities but yeah I don't think I'll do anything different because I'm happy with how I am right now I'm happy with my life so yeah I'll, I'll probably come to U of T now is the time that everyone's been waiting for your question to me about U of T that I have to answer candidly yes answer I did not tell him I, I, I didn't put this, it on a yeah. question there's a question sheet for all my questions there was yeah, no, there, nothing. no no sheet for his you said you know it's not too hard to make friends if you take the initiative to do <laughs> right. so but is it hard to make close trustworthy connections at uft mm. because of how competitive it is i've heard like the horror stories of like people giving other people like fake notes so they do bad on an exam mm. or not sharing notes at all yeah um so i personally don't have any bad experience with you know sharing notes with anyone but um speaking on like the whole competitiveness side and everything like you know i've seen seen a couple cases it might be because I'm in the business school but like yeah I, I heard some stories like friends applying to like the same places together well they didn't mean to apply to the same places together but you know it's 
friend told this guy that like, hey, I'm applying to XYZ company and the you know, 10 other people are like, hey, I'm also gonna apply to XYZ and they meet at, you know, the same conference room or something <laughs> like that, right? So yeah, there are definitely like, you know, snaky people, but that doesn't mean that everyone at U of T is snaky. There's definitely like wholehearted people as well too. So I think it really depends on like who you make friends with. But what I'm gonna say is like, you know, kind of be careful because that person might be one of those people who are super competitive. But you know, if you kind of like watch your back and like you kind of get to know the real person, like the real side of your friend, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Well, that's it for today's interview. Thank you again to you guys and Ayman for joining me today. But yeah, I'll see you I'm guys sick of in my next day one. Dreaming. I just want the feeling of you